Hey folks, just want to do a quick video here showing the differences between the SciTech setup and a Verpal setup to sort of give you an understanding of how the two different joysticks work. Uh, I'll start off with the Verpal. So here we have the Verbal configuration software, which allows you to change settings upon the joystick. Basically what you're doing when you're changing stuff inside this uh, is that you are sending the configuration back down to the actual the verbal device and then after that you don't the software is not required so whenever you press a button on the joystick the physical button for example is mapped to a logical button and then that information is sent from the device and goes to windows and to see on the axes um obviously there's several axes here and whenever one of them moves that information is direct uh, relay directly into Windows. So you can see that if you go and look at the um, devices and you can do a view of the joystick to see what the axes are like and which buttons are pressed. Now, um, this basically means that most of the smarts, as in uh, making changes, so if I, I say, for example, in this tab here, I want to make one of these axes perform a button command, all that is actually programmed into the configuration which is on the device itself. So it's um, all the smarts basically is inside the joystick and the firmware that runs inside the joystick. Uh, that does have some limitations. For example, you can see here that I can only actually set up four bands in total for well, I've got six different axes here, so there's not a huge amount of, of wiggle room there if I want to change things around. The buttons here, basically all I can do is swap buttons around and get the different logical button, which is what Windows receives, mapped to maybe different physical buttons on the stick itself. So it's quite limited in what functionality you have. Uh, before we leave the uh, Verbal software, I'll just quickly show you some of the stuff you can do with Axes. So we're in the Axes tab now, and this is on the uh, joystick, my Warbird. So if I double click on one of the Axes, it brings us up this sub tab with more information on in it. This first one here is basically showing you the information. I'm moving the joystick backward and forward. So that's all the way back, all the way forward. I'm just going to let it go in that cell in the middle. So this is showing you the values that are currently being output from the device. This is the raw data values, which are run through like a smoothing algorithm to give us well, stable status actually right now. Um, I haven't really played around with this too much. It looks like it's just another centering um, utility. The fun and important bits are the dead zone. So if you want to increase the dead zone on a particular axis, you can just fiddle with the values there. Uh, the other thing which I would play with, I mean, I don't, honest, honestly don't know what these other things actually do yet because there's pretty much no documentation for them. Uh, this one here for curve, by default, uh, the deflection is consistent and linear across the entire range. So if we wanted a curve to give us slightly more accuracy, we go to symmetrical and then punch in different values. You tend to go smaller values increment until you get up to the top and the top one's generally 100. I'll show you how to do that in a different video. But that's the axis tuning for the uh, verbal software. Okay, so as I've stated already with the VPC stuff, most of the smarts is actually in the firmware that's running on the device itself. Now the SciTech works in a very different way. What you have with SciTech is you have this, the SciTech device and what it does is it sends you know, the axes, uh, positioning and the button presses etc up but the profiling software sits in between uh, the joystick and Windows. Now the profiling software allows you to do certain things. I'll just load it up here and give you a quick run through of it. Okay, so here we have it. There's only really two tabs that are important. One is the settings. And what this does is it allows you to do things like calibrate the axes and also do things like dead banding, 
uh, curves, for example. You could set curves on a joystick if you wanted to. And this changes how the um, analog axes are actually passed through the windows. So this sort of sits at this level here. The raw data comes up and gets modified and then gets passed on the windows. So this profiling software basically sits in between the two. Now, this profiling software, um, the, it basically runs whenever you start Windows and stays active the whole time. Uh, the other part, and this is the more, this is where the sort of stuff gets really good, is the programming side of things. Now, the profiling means you can do some really, really neat stuff with the joystick. I'll just run through a couple of different sort of scenarios and things you may or may want to do. Okay, so um, right now, this is a very, very simple profile. So this top button here is basically programmed to press and send the button F, like a key button, you know, like a key press, whenever this particular button is depressed. So what it's doing is it's taking the information. This Obviously, this button will correspond to a standard button press. But instead of sending that button press up the windows, what it does is it substitutes it with the key press F. Now, uh, there's two ways you can handle bindings in games. Method one, you go into the game itself and you go and bind a whole bunch of buttons to the physical buttons in your joystick. Um, now, that's handy enough um, most of the time, but sometimes you want to do maybe some fancy stuff that button presses just basically won't let you do, for example. You can set, uh, there's sort of several different ways you can configure button presses and or axes. So a new key press is what that one above is, just a very, very simple one. There's a macro, which means you're going to record a whole bunch of key presses and then play them back. An advanced command, advanced command is pretty neat because you have a function or a, a set of commands or button presses when the, the button is depressed. You can then send different commands whenever it's being held down and repeating. And then whenever you take your finger off the button, you can send a totally different command. And these can be can be macros as well. So it's it's quite powerful what you can do with this software. Now, one of the things that's good about this joystick, this is my old joystick, my X55 I'm showing you here. This is a mode selector. So right now it's sitting, there we go, it's sitting in mode one and I flick it, it goes to mode two, mode three, so that's a physical button I'm pressing. So here's where the beauty of it comes in. I can do totally different, this button for example here, if I go to mode two, it's not actually doing anything right now, but I can configure it to do something else very simply. So I go, I don't know, control F, hit okay. And go, I don't know, flaps down. So now, I, when I switch modes, that one button can now have different uh, different commands being sent to Windows. And this is where this becomes quite powerful. You can have a complete mode set. This is obviously only the throttle side I'm showing you. You can do, obviously do the same for the main joystick itself. The good thing about this is you can set up bindings and um, move them around very easily if I wanted to change that. So I've only got two commands bound to this right now. So I want to maybe move out the flaps down, change that the flaps down. Maybe I want to swap this to something else. It's very, very easily done because once you've basically entered a command, so that's obviously the name of the command and what the action is, and it's very, very easy to swap and move them around if you want to change things. It's very, very quick. Now, um, another thing that this software does extremely well is a thing called banding. And I'm just going to turn this rotator. Okay, so notice obviously, as soon as I turn the rotator, it takes us to it. So this is a, a rotary. This is analog rotary. It has a center detent for the null position. Then it swings to the left round to the right again to the center detent and then round to the right fully. Now you can do some nice stuff with this. You've seen before in the first part where I was talking about the VPC software allows you to do bands and stuff. And what this allows you to do is something very similar. 
and it does it a whole lot better. So right now it's set to fallback, which basically means act as an analog axis. So what I can do is set bands. Now straight away what it's done is it's dropped three bands in. You can see this this corresponds to the rotational factor from 0 to 33. It can be one command, 33 to 67 another, 67 to 100 can be a totally different command. And also there's the ability to edit bands. So for example, I could put flaps, flaps down, and in the center position, which is roughly around about 50%, where it's sitting right now, nothing would happen. If I swing it round, you can see that the F goes active, back to the middle again, and then round to the right. So what that basically means is that when I switch to those different modes, it will send that command. Now, these are simple key presses. I generally would not use simple key presses for this. I will just uh, do nothing and do nothing. For something like a, uh, this, for example, I would probably use a new advanced command. And what I would do would be, I'll just do F for flaps again. I'll call it FL just. Hit OK. Now, what I've just set up was a advanced command, which basically means that if I were to scroll round and activate that, it'll only press that F key once. If it was a key command and I moved it round to that zone, it's going to keep the F key held down. So an advanced command basically hits it once. So that's a press and that's release and it'll trigger that once. Uh, so that's that's probably that's the, the best way to use this particular type of uh, dead or sorry banding the other thing is, is you can edit the bands and add a few more if you want so there i'll just okay that so now we've got one two three you probably use that as a, like a, a a do nothing band four or five bands now that's on one rotary as you see seen yourself on the last or the first part of the video with the vpc you've only got four of these in total across the entire joystick Whereas I have five currently just on one axis. And this is why I think that the SciTech software, this this sort of this way of looking at it, where you have the outputs from the joystick device being sent up and then run through a big piece of profiling software and then into Windows is an extremely powerful way of doing it. It means you can do all sorts of weird and wacky configurations. And it also means that um you can create profiles for individual aircraft. For example, I still have most of my profiles still here. I'm not going to save that because I don't care about it. If I were to show you, ah, there's helis. That's a good one. So this is one I use for flying helicopters. So mode one is basically for the Huey. Mode two and mode three, they're exclusively used for the MI-8 because there is a lot of buttons on the MI-8. But you can see there's a whole lot of different commands here. Now, like I showed you earlier, one of the best things about this is the profile, the way that SciTech looked at the profile, they decided to make a section at the bottom of the profile file itself, basically just text. It lists an ID number and then the actual name of what I've called the, the thing and then the command, whatever that command is, as a little section. So at the end of the file, all these are stored all the complete list and the complete list right now is huge it's probably be about three three and a half to four screen fills i'd say and what it basically means is that if you have a profile for an, an aircraft and a lot of the key commands are very similar across other aircraft for example dcs flame and cliffs three a lot of the aircraft would have very very common key sets but some of them are slightly tweaked and what it means is you can take that profile, copy it, and then just adjust a couple of buttons around or add some new extra commands that you may need and then save the profile back. It's very, very easy just to rearrange. If I want to swap one of these commands around for a different one or move things around, I can. Whenever you first start flying with something, you may find out that you set a profile binding up for it. But maybe the ergonomics don't work well when you're trying to fly and you know perform commands and stuff and having to rebind actual keys you know having to press a key and then enter a command and stuff can be a real pain in the arse the ability just to have 
the commands available in a drop down list that you've ever used and then just to pick one and, and just swap things around very very quickly uh, is one of the best design decisions that they made for doing this piece of software now, i really would like it if the uh the folks at Verpal would create something similar to this. Um, SciTech, the hardware itself, you know, it's okay. I mean, my my X fifty five is still mainly working. The two things that have went slightly wrong with it was these rotaries are slightly intermittent, which basically means they wiggle around randomly whenever you move the sticks, and it's probably due to the wiring between here and the base it's, it's more like an issue but then again the joystick is about what i don't know six or seven years old i've had a lot of use out of it so it's held up pretty well but the actual software the SciTech software that they created to do all this profiling they, they really did get it right moving moving a lot of the functionality for changing and uh adjusting things from the actual joystick into a piece of software that sits between like the joystick and windows was a, a very very good design decision so that's all i really have to say on that i just wanted to show you some of the differences between the two and why if vpc uh generated and created a program like this it would be extremely good now there are programs out there that do this similar sort of task and the main one is uh, one called joystick gremlin I have had a bit of a play around with it. I've only spent like a couple of hours sort of trying to suss out how it works. And it is pretty good. The one thing it doesn't have though is this ability for a profile to have commands in it that are currently not used and not bound to buttons. That would be an extremely powerful um, piece of functionality if it was added into the, uh, the Joystick Gremlin software. I have made a feature request to see if they would do it and um, he is looking into it, but it's probably going to take a lot of work to get it done. But I think it would it would greatly benefit users. So I'm going to do another video on how to use the mode selector on the Verbal Throttle to uh, create full profile modes the way that the the current SciTech software uh, does. Uh, there's no, there's three three way mode selector on the X55. This is my example I'm talking about. On the verbal throttle, you have five, which is a lot. I mean, there are a lot of hat switches on that throttle. I really like the uh, verbal stuff, don't get me wrong. I just think that if they had a piece of software similar to this sitting between their joystick and the actual what Windows receives, it would be incredibly, incredibly powerful.